Hey, y'all. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to be talking about cell structures and function and also uh, about permeable, selective permeability across the membrane. So it's going to be all about the cell, baby. Yes, it is. And once you finish, you should be able to see that there is some correlation between structure and function of a cell. You should also be able to see the reason why there's a certain surface area in the cell. Um, you should be able to um, see the evolution of the eukaryotic cell. Sure. All right, so let's get started. Now, when it comes to structure and function, we know that the shape of a cell will determine its function. You can think about this with the human body, right? With the human body, there are four different types of tissues, right? You have connective, muscle, nervous, and epithelial. <laughs> Almost missed it. Epithelial are going to be membrane bound. They're kind of like tightly packed together, right? And so and their shape either in a columnar, cuboidal, and so forth. So their shape actually helps with the with being able to be laid in sheets because its function is for protection. Okay, whereas muscle, we can use smooth muscle for example. It's shaped like a little S. It's smooth. It has um, spindles at the end of it, and it just helps to give like this smooth motion, like a peristalsis motion. Y'all remember that? Makes you poop. <laughs> helps with digestion. Okay, and then you have your um, nervous cell, and it looks like the stars in the sky. Um, and that's because it's got to get communication. So very similar to wires. Um, it has these dendrites at the top, and here's, if I use my arm as an example, here's like the cell body, and then you have your axon, which is just one long, um, area where messages get sent. So it's shaped like this in order to receive messages like it's like here give me some messages and then it's able to send um, that message to another cell. So in this way you can see that the shape or the structure of something will resemble will help you figure out its function. So the theory of endosymbiosis is basically this whole idea that all cells come from pre-existing cells. Cell theory, right? So billions of years ago, everything was prokaryotic cells, which are basically unicellular. And so what happened was it was thought that chloroplast and mitochondria were their own cells okay they were their own prokaryotes then they were endosymbiotically endo meaning in symbiotic meaning a uh, relationship they were engulfed by a larger cell and due to the way that evolution works they just ended up staying inside of that cell and creating the eukaryote and so this is how the eukaryote came to be. So as a review, your prokaryotic cells, I call them the no cells. They have no membrane-bound organelles. They have no nucleus. They're literally just um, one big cell with some DNA, some naked DNA in there, right? Um, and so a eukaryote, is going to be a higher level or more complex cell and most of your all of your animals and plants are essentially eukaryotic cells right so that means that they have their organelles they have all these membrane bound organelles uh, our ribosomes in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes they're just larger in the eukaryote okay and of course the cell itself, the eukaryotic cell, is going to be larger than the prokaryotic cell. Why are cells so small? Like, 
I can't even see it. Like, if I look at my hand, I can't see these cells. And the reason being is that they have to have a particular type of surface area in order to do all of this um, metabolic processes, okay? Um, so the ratio between the surface area and the volume is what you really need to look at when you realize why smaller is actually better. For example, if you took a cube that was one millimeter um, and it had six sides, okay, then the surface area would be the six sides times the one millimeter squared. So that would give you a surface area of six millimeters squared, okay? As opposed to the volume, which is going to be millimeters cubed, then you would just cube the one millimeter, and that would just be like one millimeter cubed. So there's going to be a six to one ratio between the surface area and the volume. Okay, so that means that there is a larger surface area um, on that cell as opposed to if you had a cell that was even, say, 5 millimeters in, um, on each of its six sides. So then you would just take the six sides times the 5 squared, because um, we're talking about area, so 5 millimeters squared would give you 25. So 6 times 25 will give you um, 150. So that would be the surface area, would be a 150. Whereas if you took 5 and you cubed it, that would be 125. So if you reduce that down, the ratio, the surface area, would be 150 and the um, volume would be 125. Reduce that down, that would be like a 1.2 1 to a 1 ratio, almost like a 1 to 1 ratio, meaning that it has a very small surface area. Okay, so smaller in this case is better. So here comes the point. Here's what you need to know. If there was an elephant and a mouse, would their cells be different sizes? And the answer is emphatically, we know they would. The elephant would just have more cells because it needs those smaller cells for more surface area.